What's up, you guys? It's Nastasia here with the Nocturnal at the Film Independent Spirit Awards. I can't wait to talk to all the nominees. Stay tuned. Hi, Amy. How are you? Look at you. Congratulations on your nomination. How wonderful for Best Supporting Actress. So for the novice, I wanted to ask you, so this movie is so... I mean, this this movie is so action-packed with sports. Did you have a background in sports? Did you have to learn how to become a rower? There's a lot of, like, intense it's, shots here. It's very intense. Um, I have a small background in sports. Uh, they were a big part of my childhood. Um, I played basketball and volleyball, so I had some of that. And Jamie, my character, also played basketball and volleyball, which was very fitting. Um, I'd never rowed before, um, maybe once at the gym but it's very, very different. And actually, the correct way to row is not the way a lot of people row at the gym. So there was a lot to learn in a very short period of time. I was filming Coda right before I filmed this, so I was in Massachusetts, but they found an incredible, incredible rowing instructor at Gordon College. Maddie Hopkins trained me every second I could, um, which were very few, but we made it work, and it's an incredibly hard sport. Shout out to all the rowers. I don't know how you do it, but thanks for letting me try and thanks for letting me represent your, your sport because it is harder than anybody thinks it is. It's incredibly hard. Yeah. yeah, it's a difficult sport and playing an athlete, you have to put yourself in that mental space. Talk to me about the mental health component that goes along with this story and kind of what, you know, being a pro athlete or attempting to be might do to you mentally. For sure. I mean, I think the shooting schedule sort of helped with that a little bit. I also have to shout out our other rowers in the film that were actual college rowers that were still in school at the same time and to be around them, to watch them, to throw myself into that for the, the few months leading up to it um, and actually filming was incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And talk to me about Coda, you know, switching gears. How excited are you to tell that story as well? I'm thrilled just to be a part of it. I think it is such an incredibly important story about family and about family dynamic and the fact that it also happens to represent the deaf community in a way that I feel like it hasn't really been represented before is incredible and the cherry on top is seeing how the world is receiving it because what a blessing. We don't make movies, you know, for with that as our direct focus so to, to see the the love that it's been receiving has been just incredible and I'm so proud of the team and they're sweeping up at the awards and I'm so proud of them and just honored to have to have been a small part of it. It's amazing you get to represent a lot of different people with your craft so I'm excited to see what else you do you so getting so much recognition already so congratulations you deserve it enjoy your day thank you, so thank you. Nice, nice to talk with you but I do want to talk about you too today. You are such a badass, okay? Powerhouse. Usually actors, when they go into a movie that's surrounding a sport, they're training for months and they've got to like almost make up for not being a professional. But you are a professional boxer. You've been doing this your whole life pretty much. Talk to me about what it's like stepping into the acting world. You know, boxing is in a, it's a performance. You know, we're up on a stage, we have judges and we have to perform. And I believe that the parallels in boxing really helped me to kind of cross over to acting um, you know it was uh, tough but just like a director they see what I don't see on the camera my judges see what I don't see in a fight so there's so many parallels to this and, and um, I believe it helped me a bit yeah absolutely I see those parallels of a performance so with this film though did you have to do uh, you know any additional training to get yourself ready for it or were you just in the gym every day you were how did you work this out for this on screen well, Boxing is no season, so I'm always in training. Um, I just knew there was a certain look that we wanted, so I made sure I was training like I was training for a fight, so I'd be, you know, a little bit, you know, almost like making weight and kind of know that fighter, that very feral, primal sense. So um, because I had a goal, it was like a fight camp to me. So that, you know, I just trained even harder. I knew there was a certain look and certain theme that we wanted to go and really honing in on this character. Yeah, absolutely. And how amazing that your character is nominated for Best Female Lead. How incredible. 
incredible is that? How are you feeling? Feeling amazing, you know, it's my character, but it's just the whole story itself. Her, this character and, you know, the theme that uh, based around missing and murdered indigenous women, that's what's really winning right now. And the fact that we got nominated is just amazing. Amongst so many other indigenous and native nominees, this is amazing. I just, I love it. Absolutely, and what an important story to tell. Talk to me about why it is important to tell this story for those who aren't necessarily always represented in film and television. Well, you know, we get represented as people from the past. Like we're just in, in still in the 1700s and we're still here. We're not going anywhere We have so much talent and you know mainstream media seems to not put things like missing and murdered indigenous women or finding residential school children uncovered or Line three all those things are really you know in native country, but it's not mainstream So I have a you know a voice for the voiceless I use my boxing platform to bring awareness to things like missing and murdered indigenous women So I you know take the opportunity especially in this indie space where we tell those most necessary stories It's amazing to be able to do so here too. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for using your voice and your platform for women everywhere and indigenous women. I can't wait to see what this film does. I know everyone's very excited about it. So congratulations and enjoy your day. Thank you for talking with me. Congratulations on being here and all of your work you've put in. Talk to me about cinematography, all the challenges and wonderful parts that go into it for those who don't know at home. I mean, I don't want to say it too loud because then everyone is gonna come, but it's probably one of the best jobs in the world. Yeah. You know, yeah, cinematography is basically the right hand of a director, is the one that is behind the the lighting and the camera, you know, so it's like you are there in the action and you are creating images and putting lights and creating, you know, a look of a film, you know, so it's it's kind of very good job. Yeah. It's a very fun job. You don't get all the lights and shine, but because you're behind yeah. the cameras and the lights, you know. But um, but it's 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 a wonderful job. You know? I'm very I'm very very happy that I took that path. To yeah, be absolutely. Well, talk to me about the aesthetic for your film. What went into it? What was inspiring you? Did you change decisions along the way? What went down? So passing is a. Black and white 4-3 movie that it's, you know, not, not the usual, not the most mainstream decision. So it was always, there's always an attitude to, to making that movie look the way it is, you know. And it came from the director, from, from Rebecca, Rebecca Hall, you know, who is an amazing actress and an amazing director, you know. So it's, it was, um, it was a lot, it's a, it was a long process with a lot of people involved, uh, an amazing team. And, you know, you just, you just try to tell the story with images the best you can, you know, try to create images that will stuck into people's head, you try to tell or represent the character the best, play, play, uh, the best possible way you can, and, you know, you just try to make a good movie, you know? Yeah, and I think it's so interesting that passing does tell a very interesting story of a woman who is passing as white with this man, and, you know, sh it is black and white. So we, you know, that brings an, a, an interesting element that we are talking about race, but the movie's black and white. Was there intention behind that? Absolutely. Everything we did was pretty intentional, you know. We are all passing for something, you know, at the end of the day. And um, and in the movie, we're telling the story of of these women that, well, especially one that is passing for white, you know, when she's not, you know. And but uh, and and then the the fact of shooting black and white, it was totally related to that. And every exposure, every luminance, every light uh, and shadow in the movie just has a meaning, has a, has an intention, and it's just trying to explain those characters, explain the movie, you know, itself. Visual storytelling, absolutely. Oh, Yo, congratulations. I hope you enjoy your day. I know everyone's going to love your film and already does, so I hope you enjoy your day. Congratulations. Thank you. Just speak to her. Hello, gorgeous. How are you doing? You look Carry fabulous. Here. This, this gives me very much of a Kardashian oh, K. Kardashian K. Nice. The fabulous ladies. You look fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much. How's the feeling being here? I love Zola so you much, do. and I loved your performance in it. It was so fast. You know, it was this big, but it happened to be that big. You know, right. it tied the movie together because what people needed to understand in that movie is it was about you know sex workers, yeah. sex yeah. trafficking, sex. Anybody involved in any secular thing, God is always in the midst. Yes. You know. It's true. And so you know, as a house mother from the movie, I'm gonna pray like. God, send us the money. We need yeah, that tonight. Yeah. yeah. Don't Bring us some money today. Well, <laughs> uh, definitely today, okay? Yeah. 
you know. Well, what was it like working on set? I know this story is just so insane. It went from being a tweet, you know, Zola putting out what happened to her. It's a true story. And then you guys trying to recreate it. And you playing, you know, one of the main dancers, looking out for everybody. The house mother. The house the house mother. mother. Not a dancer, not a you know. Dancer, yes, She's yes. The girl tells the girls to get what, the money. What to do? And she prays to God to bring the money to the place, you know. She's anointed. Hi, Yadabo Shata. She's anointed, girl, she's anointed. Um, it was amazing because at first, you know, when you read the tweets and then you're like, this story is insane. And then you watch the director, Janitska, you know, bring this thing, Janitska and Jeremy, bring this thing to life. It's like, whoa, yeah. this happened. Yeah. It's fun, it's funny, it's a roller coaster, and it happened, it's amazing. And, and it's representing a group of people that aren't always seen on screen, and and actually diving into their story versus just, oh, this person went to the, to the strip club, this person went to the club. Yeah. You know, it's actually a story yes. surrounding the people that are in that world. Yes. It normalized people that are involved in sex work and yes. secular life or whatever, because sex work is work. Yeah, you absolutely, know. and we should support. The government the government wants to, wait a minute, have I, I got to be quiet, I haven't paid <laughs> sex work. <today. laughs> Hilarious. Thank I'm Thank excited you. for you. Thank uh, you. Congratulations on the Thank recognition. You. What can we see you in next? What do you got going on? Um, well, you know, I have the T.S. Madison experience on WeTV. Yes. Also, um, I have turned out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. Um, um, in the upcoming movie, Bros, that's coming out at Universal Pictures. Also, I'm in a Netflix movie that's coming out called The Perfect Fine with Gabrielle Union. I'm working. You're working, yeah, girl. I'm working, darling. I'm I working. I love it. You know, I've been a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race and yes. stuff like that. So, you know, this, 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 this is what it is. I'm always working, always. And I'm so glad to be working. Yes. Well, we yes. love seeing you. So yes. I'm glad you're here. Have a fun day. Thank, Thank you for you. talking Thank to you. me. Well, congratulations on your nomination. And talk to me about your film, what went into it. Talk to me about your character. Oh, wonderful. I, you know, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. First of all, I'm, I'm celebrating two nominations. Yes. Um, uh, one for Rutherford Falls in the television space and Wild Indian in feature film. So the double nomination means a lot to me. These, these are projects that I'm really, truly proud of. And uh, I've been a fan of Film Independent and, these, and this event for years. Uh, my fellow nominees in, in those categories categories, uh, Jenna Schmeeting for Rutherford Falls, uh, Chaske Spencer, my co-star in Wild Indian, uh, for us to be celebrated and to have indigenous excellence in film celebrated is, is a really important thing. Yeah, that it, representation is important because there has been trauma, there has been things that have happened, and that narrative does need to be told. Talk to me about why it's important that it is recognized and this story is told for Wild Indian. I heard about how there were just so many, there's different challenges that come along with producing a film like this and telling a story of this kind. So talk to me about why it's important for people to see this movie. You know, Wild Indian is a project that I've been waiting perhaps my whole career to find, and I'm so proud that I was part of it, uh, to tell our stories. when indigenous storytellers take control of uh, production, of, of writing, of direction, of performance, uh, allows us um, as a community to uh, be truthful in a way that I think has been difficult previously. Um, and so, you know, the content of Wild Indian is, is, is troubling. It's, uh, you know, intense, intense subject matter. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of, of the risks that we took. And in the other space as well, Rutherford Falls uh, celebrates indigenous joy. You know, so on one hand, you know, we explore perhaps a darker side, and with Rutherford Falls, we expand our our joy, what we what we love to do, and what makes us laugh. Yeah, and I love that you get to tell both sides of that. That's wonderful. Well, congratulations on your nomination. I can't wait to see. I'm I'm waiting for a win. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you, Thank you so much for speaking with me. Appreciate it. Congratulations on all of the buzz around Wild Indian. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. Just yeah. very cool, very pumped to be here. Yeah. Don't really know what I walked into, but it seems like it's going to be a fun night. It's going to be a great night. Well, plug your movie. Talk to us about the story. What inspired you to tell this story? Mm -hmm. uh, Wild Indian, you know, it's a story of two um, Anishabe Native Americans that 
commit a hate um, commit a heinous crime when they're in elementary school and they kind of bury it literally and figuratively and the past comes knocking back many years later as their paths have diverged and then converged back together starring Michael Gray Eyes and Chaske Spencer who are about to walk your way yeah. um, and you know as a producer it's just about finding material that you want to be a part of and want to tell and I read the script I met the director and I just said I have to be able to help you tell this movie and we embarked in a journey that took about a year from there to get up and running to make the movie and then another year to finish the movie through COVID we premiered at Sundance last year which was wonderful and you know this is kind of a cool culmination of it all because we didn't really have that premiere all together and we have not even really been all together in the same place since we shot the film so it's kind of like a cool yeah. postscript on the whole experience yeah you get to reunite with yeah. these people that you had this entire journey a really intense project and you got right. to finally see them and t pat yourselves on the back for all of that work that you did talk to me about some of the challenges that come with making an, an independent yeah. film as a producer right. because you know sometimes there's there's a lot of challenges there so talk to me about that and how you guys overcame them well you know money is always the first thing because yeah. you never have enough money and you never get the money that you think you're going to get. Um, and we had some incredible financiers and executive producers that put up what they possibly could to help us make this movie and resources and help on all fronts to be able to do it. Um, you know, you're always kind of like the little thing that's working within the studio system, so you're dealing with actor availability issues and you're dealing with schedules for other talents and, you know, filming in locations that are, we shot in Oklahoma, I had never even been to Oklahoma before <laughs> prior to this and, you know, we prepped a movie in three weeks and we're shooting and there was just a whirlwind and, you know, the, the, the cinematographer never has all the equipment that they would need to do it the right way, but they worked their ass off to figure it out and production designers, same thing. We had some wonderful, you know, collaborators on this. Lyle, the director, um, really put an awesome team together of, you know, Jonathan, our production designer, and Eli, our um, cinematographer, and, you know, and the wonderful cast of Michael Gray Eyes and Chaske Spencer, Phoenix Wilson, Jesse Eisenberg, Kate Bosworth, you know, just some incredible An people. Incredible yeah, cast. yeah, yeah, and incredible help, cast. you know, a lot and a lot of help from those people. Somebody like Jesse, who really doesn't have any business or <laughs> time to be in our movie, just read the script and told Lyle, like, I have to be in this movie and let me know any way I could help. And you know, that that was uh, you know, part of the part of the journey for us and he was he's been a champion for the film as well. So that's amazing that there's just so many moving parts that go into creating a film of this size and you guys did that. Talk to me about why people should see this film. Why should people see this film, this story? I think that this film is important for people to see because it really speaks to the trauma of the Native American experience and you know it's an interesting perspective for somebody like me who's not a native person um, but respects that community greatly have forged an amazing friendship with Lyle the director um, and have learned a lot you know about it through making the film researching it on my own to really understand it and treat it with such grace and delicacy that de delicate nature that I was able to as a producer because it's very you know to just produce something for the sake of producing something that you don't understand the experience of it's disingenuous and not the right way to go about things and I really had to learn about this and take it in and that would made me better as a producer to help tell this story Absolutely. and understand it so yeah, and, and, and like as an outsider coming in, that was really important to me. Absolutely. Me. Having empathy for that culture and understanding what these people have gone through. Well, you deserve the recognition. I'm excited to see what happens today. Congratulations again and enjoy your day. Congratulations, you guys, on the John Cassavetes nomination. How cool. How are you guys feeling?
Awesome. I think, yeah, totally. It, to me, it's the coolest award. Yeah, it is the coolest award. And I heard you mention that you guys, well, I know you guys kind of started indie animation. What were some of the challenges that go into having a lower budget? What were things that you were absolutely were not going to scrap from the film, despite the budget that you were like, this has to happen? Animation can be tedious. It's tough. No, yeah, it is tedious, always. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, the goal going in was harnessing the making a lot out of a little and making the, the limitations, uh, the, the greatness of the movie and not a hindrance to the movie. Is that yeah, and I, I think when you're working with such a large project, the scope of it can be intimidating and the key is to lie to yourself <laughs> and just do the work that's in front of you. and you go to work every day and eventually you get there and it happened for you guys how amazing that's awesome and i heard you mention something very cool richmond virginia okay i'm from richmond virginia i love vcu parents are alumni what was it like working with them because they have such talented students what was their involvement talk to me about that uh, we were really lucky to bring on a lot of interns and then actually my lead animator started as an intern coming out of VCU and I could not imagine doing a project without her now. We, we fit together like puzzle pieces yeah. and just having that resource and the energy of the students there has been wonderful for the project. Awesome. And, and what are you guys most excited about this recognition? Obviously it's a really fun day but you just want to get eyes telling the story and, and talk to me about telling that story, Crypto Zoo, to plug, plug what the meat is of this movie. Um, it's a zoo, it's, a, it's an animated movie about a zoo that rescues and houses mythological beings, so it's kind of about um, imaginations around the world, but it's inside of a, I, I call it a pop art collage movie, but it's kind of inside of a messed up blockbuster movie framework. Yeah. It's kind of like if you watch Jurassic Park while you were really sick with a fever. <laughs> Amazing. Everybody go watch Crypto Zoo. Congratulations. I hope you guys win. And awesome that you guys are representing a part of Little Richmond, Virginia. Very cool. Thank you, Thank you guys. So how are you feeling being here today? Wonderful. Yeah. It feels so good to be here in person. Yeah. yeah. Who are you most excited to see? What cast and crew are you most excited to see today? There's so many fabulous people at this carpet. Yes. So we're nominated for a doc series called Nuclear Family. So I'm very excited to see our director, Rai Russo Young. And then also my company, Topic Studios, co-distributed Spencer the Kristen Stewart movie and she is the honorary chair of this event so I'm very excited to see her too. Yeah, absolutely and congratulations on Nuclear Family. So what were some of the challenges? What are you most proud of? Talk to us about the highs and lows of a big project like this. Um, you know it's a very personal project to Rye and so really that, that there were no lows for us. It was simply a joy um, and the highs were really supporting her as she created this wonderful piece of art and um, you know realized her vision. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate talking with me. Thank you so much. So much. Have a good one. Okay. Congratulations. I know you just got recognized for your first feature, Holler. So cool. How amazing is that? How are you feeling? This is incredible. This is a dream come true. I watch the Spirit Awards every year and I and now you're here. always wondered if I would be here someday. Yeah. And I mean, it's so cool that you're representing blue collar workers with your film. I'm also from a really rural town and I know you're from Southern Ohio and you wanted to represent like an Appalachian woman who may be doing what a quote unquote man's job and what obstacles come with that. You know, can you just talk about what inspired you to make this film and, and what were some of the challenges that came with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's partially based on my life, and so I wanted to make a film that was about a girl's pursuit of opportunity yes. and education. And what's funny is the journey in, in the story mirrors the journey in making this film as well, and how hard it was um, for me as a, you know, as a director who's a woman to get the funding, the opportunities to, to make the film. And it took me a really long time. And I'm also excited. There's so many amazing uh, directors who are women here nominated tonight with our first films. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's just been, I don't know, it's, it's just incredible. It's incredible. That, that a little film like Holler, which is 
like the little film that could yeah. is at the Spirit Awards, is being recognized at all, is uh, dreamy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hard to go into film, especially being a woman and, and trying to be taken seriously. I think that's a lot of this story as well, is being taken seriously and, and everything she has to overcome. Um, talk to me about working with this fabulous cast and crew. This The, the actors and actresses in this film are just incredible. Yes, they are. And also, before that, I'll say that the opportunity through women are on, you know, both sides of the camera, but also with the press. And so it's amazing for you to interview me because there's not a lot of women on that side either, covering yeah. women. Uh, um, nice to have women supporting women. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, the cast is amazing, led by Jessica Barton. Um, I so wish she were here yes. tonight. She is so deserving of being here because the movie wasn't possible without her. And she led every frame of the film and she's such a fearless actor and she is uh, something that everyone loves about the film. So she is here in, in spirit and I'm sad that she's not here and not nominated. Um, she, she is incredible and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of her and a lot more of you since this is your first feature and everyone's already talking about it and there's so much buzz surrounding it. I know that one of the controversial parts of the film was Donald Trump's voice being in it and how you're saying that's not the antagonist of the film. That's really not what we're talking about here. However, he is a key player in the blue collar world and people who did vote for him. Can you just talk to me about including that piece in the film? What what went behind that decision? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, that needed to be in there because that that's what was happening in the world. Yes. Whether we like it or not, that was happening in the world. And I wanted to show it matter of factly. It's, a, it's news clips, you hear his voice in his own words. Words. Nothing was manipulated in it. And you, I think you see the, the people who are listening to it, you see diff, like different kinds of people. It's not like we're in this blue collar town and they're all Trumpers, it's nothing like that. You see many different uh, perspectives, but he's not, it's not the antagonist in it. I mean, partially maybe, but the system at large that all of the characters are a part of, that's the antagonist in the film. And the reason you never really see those people making decisions that influence that town is because I don't think they would ever visit my hometown. Yeah. I mean, the, the rural blue collar world does get this kind of hillbilly, oh, uneducated, oh, this and that uh, reputation. And I, I like that you are using fact and you're trying to base it behind something that this is really what's going on. I, I guess, is that going to also be an influence for future films? I know this is what we're talking about right now, but I'm sure you have so much ahead of you with this being your first one. So, are you gonna are you gonna keep? Uh, are you working on anything now? What can you tease for us? Yeah, I'm working on my second film. It's yes. cast, and we're you know working on financing, oh working on get, trying to get it made. Amazing. And um, I think I'll always have a similar kind of character at the center of everything I do about women and independence. And and you know I think Collar was about a woman and her pursuit of an education. This next one is about um, women and themes of resilience and and independence and also ambition. And I think women and ambition uh, is not something that people often think go together very well. Uh, so that's thematically there are things I think I'll always tackle, but I'd love to play in different genres. Like I'd love to do a horror movie. I'd love to do a thriller. Like I'd love to do things like that as long as I'm still making films that are thematic in line with what I care about and saying something that matters for women I love it well congratulations thank you for talking with me I hope to see more of your films soon I'm so excited congratulations thank again thank you well that wraps it up for this carpet thanks so much for watching don't forget to comment like and subscribe if you liked watching this video and comment down below who your favorite interview was see you next time